You guys are the Terrifics. You make Be Terrific special. This is for you. This is your live continuing coverage of New York Comic Con 2015 on Be Terrific. We've got so many Terrifics here in the audience watching. Thank you guys so much. You're amazing as well. And we're going to have giveaways for you at home and those of you guys watching here later today. This is your live continuing coverage of New York Comic Con. I've got Andrea Vassano with me. She's my co-host. And we're just having so much fun at Be Terrific TV on all social media. I've got one of my favorite all-time guests here, just such a great guy, and you guys know him. You're, you're a legend, you really are. Todd McFarlane, oh, Mc, thank McFarlane you. Toys. <laughs> thank you. I, you know, it's just everything. I mean, you're, you're just unbelievable. You're an artist, you're a toy maker, you're a visionary, you're the owner of probably the, the three most valuable baseballs in, in history of the world. I, I, you know what? I know there's a lot of people that still sort of get riled up about the whole steroid era. Yeah. Mm. But at the end of the day, they're in the books, yeah. right? And I don't care what you say, what your emotions are. If you go, most home runs in a season, Barry Bonds 73, McGuire 70, Sammy Sosa 66, I've got those, right? We're just going to be old men someday that twitch when people <laughs> say that word. As we're like in a wheelchair at 92 at the old folks' home, the little kids are going to go, say steroids to him, Tommy. <laughs> and he goes like I, this. I don't know what it means, but grandpa always twitches when you say it. So it's just sort of going to be goofy stuff. It, it, by the way, it's still a remarkable feat. I could take all the steroids in the world, and I don't recommend this to anybody, but I could take all the steroids in the world, and <laughs> I still couldn't hit major league pitching. Yeah. Oh, well, dude, I I can't. I think I could hit a couple pitches, right? Oh, okay, I, maybe I a couple. I could hit a couple. I play Pac-10 baseball, yeah. so I face guys that actually ended up making it on the TV. So I was fortunate enough to sort of get trained at a high skill level. What I what I can't do as a Canadian, and it's a bit blasphemous, <laughs> is I can't skate. I'm, I mean, I can do it. I can go in circles, but I can't play hockey. And it's, and it's not very good. You teach me how to hit a split finger fastball, and I'll teach you how to skate. How's that? We'll do it. Yes. How are your kids? Your kids are really good baseball players. And, and I, right, how right. are they doing? I have, I have look, I have, I have three kids. One's in Israel right now going to med school. One's wow. in France studying yeah, that's abroad. Cool. And then I have one here that's with me right now. Uh, and I, I, I bug him, he doesn't like it, I bug him right now because mom and dad are Canadians, we're living down here. Two sisters are abroad, and I go, you're sort of the slacker that you were born and live in the same country <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Everybody else has moved Everybody's on from the country that elsewhere. they were born on. So he's American living in America. He's a little bit of a slacker right now. So that's, we'll, we'll get to him. That's but he's funny. good. He's, he's a good baseball player. Yeah. Plays center field, pitches for me. All right? and, he's, he's, and you coach. I coach. That Dude, must be the most important thing. It's one of the reasons thing. why people go, how come I don't see you at more conventions? Because I do a lot of coaching. We play on the weekends. That's when our tournaments are, right? Yeah. And so I think that, that when I was younger and, and before I got married, or even when I got married, we didn't have kids. Mm. You know, your weekends were free. You had more time. And then all of a sudden. Time when, is when, yours. Yeah, you, know, right. you get married, you have kids. Time, time, you divide and you allot time differently, right? And so weekends are, are different now. It's not, oh, let's go to a convention so that people can tell me nice things. I mean, <laughs> the thing about getting old and, and having people like you say nice things is I've been patted on the back plenty of times, right? I don't, that, that ego got stroked a lot. So I don't need it. I, I don't need that piece to keep me going, right? Yeah. So that's be with amazing. Kids. That's a good place to no, be no, then well, for your family. You because know? I got a lot of it. Exactly. So I'm like, I got my bucket filled Congrats. of like, oh, Todd, you're good. So yeah. now I can just go <laughs> and lead a normal life. Yeah. And I don't feel like I, I were before when I was younger in our career and, and, and most people sort of run through this. They're nervous about their careers, right? Maybe you guys too, when you started here and, mm. and there's momentum and you don't want to lose momentum Absolutely. and you have people coming. And so you, you think you've got to always be pushing it and feeding it and watering right. it and nurturing it. And sometimes at the cost of having a balanced life. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Right. And so the one thing that I've had to learn over the years as I've gotten older is just balance in career and life. How do you do that? Because you do so many things. Um, yeah. and, and especially even with the new Game of Thrones toys that you're coming out with, like how do you make sure that everything is perfect in the way it needs to be, then show up at the now, cons? So here's how I explain it to people, yeah. and you get a little bit of insight, and I had a panel and I talked about it. I figured out, and it took through trial and error, mm -hmm. and we all have it, we're all different. I figured out that I'm a four ball juggler, <laughs> and here's what that means. Give me one, I'm good. Two, three, four, I'm good. And we've seen these guys on stage. They can do a <laughs> lot of ball. But at some point, you give them one ball too many, and, they all, and fall. all the balls mm -hmm. fall. And so I figured out that past four, I do a disservice to all the other things Absolutely. I'm doing. It all sort of, it all doesn't get my attention, it doesn't work. So 
I, I go, I can have four things on my plate at any given time, and if another opportunity comes along, because it's always knocking at the door. Which is great. And if I say yes, I must put one of the balls down to insert the new ball. Never, and you don't go from four to five, you keep it at four at all times. Great advice. So I think that's a really good way to put it. And I think people need well, to I figure that I'm out. Nice job, nice job, nice job. There's your pat in the back, so you still got it. <laughs> I just want to know, I, I mean, the only thing, I, you know, this is this is something personally, forget about the viewers for a second. Okay. Uh, you owned a hockey team, <laughs> that's like my dream, I, because I would be oh, on the well, ice yeah. every day. Yeah, for with a while. them. I, I, I'd, be, I'd be practicing. But here's the problem though, I was the only, it was, it was the Edmonton Oilers yeah. and the NHL. I was a big Wayne Gretzky fan. There was talk, and again, we're going to geek out real quick, but the Quebec Nordiques and the Winnipeg Jets both moved and came south to America. Yeah. And there was fear, which was going to happen, that the Edmonton were going to come down, the bank took them in, and we had, I think, 30 days to keep it in Canada. And you wanted to keep it there because you're Canadian, and I agree, well, I think it well, needed we, to we stay. Bled two, we already bled two teams. You it was, became a Canadian thing now at that yeah. point. Not the Edmonton, you, but a Canadian. You did like a national service to Canada. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was the last guy in with the last money, so it's all good. <laughs> but here's the downside, yeah. was I was the only guy not living in Edmonton. So I couldn't, I couldn't have fun with it, right? Oh. I couldn't, right? Yeah. You want to have some fun. The, the, the biggest fun I had with it, there was two. One was they let me design the third hockey jersey that at that time became the biggest selling How jersey in that? NHL history. Was with, that the one with, with, the, the, with, the, with, the, with the like oil yeah, piece that went like that? Stuff, yeah. Oh, I love that and jersey. It, and, it, and, it, and it rocked, right? But name yeah. anyone else who's actually ever done that. No, but here's the cool That's thing. That's so cool. This, this but will, this was a cool jersey and show, it was a top seller. This will show you how young hockey players are. Okay. That, that we took four or five of them and they were going to open the box, put them on, and come out on stage with the dry ice. Big theatric. Love it. Okay, so you got these kids, they're 20, 21, that's how young yeah. they are. They don't know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Some of them are even going, I hear he does that blood stuff, and he does those okay, <laughs> okay comic books. <laughs> and, then, and they're concerned about fashion. So five minutes before we announce it, they finally open it up, the hockey players don't know, our yeah. actual own players don't know. They open it up and they go, Oh my gosh, it's cool! <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh, it's cool. get on the phone, it. and then what they say, this is how they're young. This is so funny. I'm not gonna look like a dork in front of mom. Not my <laughs> wife, oh. not my girlfriend. Mom. It's still mom, right? Wow. They don't want to look like a doofus in front of mom. I think yeah. in the locker rooms, it's amazing. In every NHL locker room, you know this, Andrea, is that it's there's a mirror right before the door, and it says, "Make sure you look good before you go out on the ice," because it is entertainment. Yep. And uh, so, what did you ever think about how Gretzky tucked in the jersey? It was a fashion statement. Did, is that? I mean, what do you think of that? No, it may, it was he, he was unique. He did yeah. his part, but that was my second fun part. We did the Gretzky retirement, right? And so when we did the Gretzky retirement, they gave us, I remember he came to a dinner and they gave a big rule and they said, whatever you do, owners, it's his time. It was a dark Italian sort of play. Do not bring a camera. So of course I brought a camera, <laughs> right? And I'm going, this is why we get I, 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 know, I know Wayne and he's a nice guy. <laughs> and he doesn't It'll mind taking pictures. So just when he was leaving, I went and I went, uh, Wayne, do you mind if we get a photo? Sure, I think he was going, why is nobody else asked? Right, take and he turned, bam, and when you take a flash in a dark Italian oh. restaurant, it is like lightning in Especially there. Especially when you're told not Boof. to. <laughs> and, and the guy who said, but all the other owners, they went, and they turned to the wife and go, I told you I should have done my problem. <laughs> He's the only guy that had the guts to do it, right? <laughs> and then we went to the ceremony where they lifted the banner, and the banner was, I went to the stadium before anybody was there, and I came behind some curtains, and there was the banner. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm, this, we're going to raise this to the rafters. I had a Sharpie. I put my initials <gasps> on it in the wow, corner. No. And when that thing went up that night, I go, I'm up in the rafters with oh Wayne Gretzky. Gosh. So wow. it's up in the corner. There's my initials on Does that Does anyone banner. know that Don't you did that? Don't tell anybody because I, I didn't anyone. tell anybody. Nobody knows. No. The, the I, real great one right here. That's Oh, oh you get to have some fun. You're such a smart. You, you think of some smart Opportunity things. is there. Totally. You take it. You, you know what? You're, I could learn from you. <laughs> you could. I mean, I, totally. I think he's. you're very much a uh, beg for forgiveness instead of ask for uh -huh. permission. Yeah. Well, no, 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 look at it. Here's, here's, here's more of it. At some point, I only get to control one thing in my, in my life. Me. Yeah. That's it. That is it. I love my wife dearly. We've been married for over 30 years, dated seven God years bless. before that. Yeah. But I, I don't get to control her. No. Right? Oh, so, so many people have to learn from you. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, 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 don't, I get to control me. Right. Right? So I don't believe in the whole thing, like, you make me so mad. What? No, you're making you mad, right? I, you can do whatever you want to me, and it is my choice on whether I allow that to get to me right. or not. It, it, like, if I'm at a bar and you bug me, 
Once, you, twice, three times you bump into me, dude, stay back. Boom, and you hit it a fifth or sixth time. And I go, dude, and he pushes me. It is my choice as to whether I take another step back or I make a fist. Right. It's all, now, I get it. He bumped me five times, but it's my ultimate choice of what I do on the next move. Right. Good, bad, or indifferent. I'm not saying you shouldn't turn around and push the guy back. I'm just saying it's my responsibility. Yeah. And I don't, get to, I don't get on. to say, well, that guy pushed me. It doesn't matter. I made deliberate choices, and it's on me. And don't pass it on. It's what I tell my kid. I don't yeah. care what you do, but never pass the buck onto somebody else because you have control over every one of your decisions. That's I great think advice. That's really good advice. Great genius. advice. Yeah. Did you ever get to skate with the Oilers? Did you ever get on the ice with them at all? No, the best, look, the only thing I ever got to do, and I don't know why people want to listen about hockey, but I got lots of silly stories. I got to golf with them one time. They were in Phoenix, yeah. which is where I live. I don't get to sort of have fun with them. They're going to do a golf tournament. I'm not a very good golfer, <laughs> but they go, Todd, you want to come out? Let's do it. They had this little tournament that's called best ball, which means they team you up and you both hit a ball and then you take wherever the best yep. ball is. The guy they teamed me up with, he used my ball once. <laughs> <laughs> so and because so he was in the water. No, but, here, <laughs> but we, were we were teamed with another team that had the goalie, yeah. Tommy Sallow. Very competitive young man, mm -hmm. right? And he was a good golfer. And he had a rookie with him who, he just finally kicked the rookie off his team, so he became solo because he wasn't hitting enough balls good. And Tommy was like, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and me and my partner, we were like terrible doing whatever. Right. We finally come in to the, the end of it and now they're gonna give out some prizes. And, the, and they had a couple prizes. One of them, as I'm coming in, they go, Todd, what did you guys score? And I go, 92. And they go, no, 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 what did you guys get? <laughs> I, thought 90, I, I, had a golf, I thought 92 was good. Not yeah. bad. I soon found out that we had 92, the next worst score was 78. There wasn't right. even anybody in the 80s, <laughs> right? So, but since everybody put 50 bucks in, there was two pots, there was two big, there was 10 gifts, but two of them were worst dresser oh. of the day. The players voted me, because I looked like a doofus that day, 100 bucks. <laughs> Number two. That's hilarious. Worst duel. Me and my partner. Another 100 bucks? Got another 100 oh bucks. My God. <laughs> Tommy Sallow. <laughs> got second best low score, that was worth nothing. <laughs> so I remember going to Tommy going, Tommy, sometimes, dude, you just got to know where the back door is, <laughs> right? Second best sometimes doesn't cut it. Right. Sometimes you got to just find another door and you get the commerce, Genius. right? That's there so it is. Funny. I'm the worst and the ugliest, and I'm up 200 bucks. <laughs> You're going to have to learn from it. So. It's amazing. You, so you guys have a whole new line of toys. Well, first of all, I didn't even realize you have the Halo toys as well. That's yeah. unbelievable. We've been doing Halo for a lot of years now, right? Oh. And they got the new game coming yeah. out. So we'll, we'll be doing all of their new designs and stuff that are in the Halo box, different scales. Please tell me it was I've, easier I've, to license I've, the Halo I've, stuff than I've it was. I've got one here I've got from Microsoft, right? Yeah, you know, they, I mean, again, they're a big corporation, but they're pretty good about allowing the developers to do of the game but what gonna, it is that they need to do, come, so. I was gonna say, uh, please tell me it was easier than getting in with the, the sporting uh, leagues. Um, Mike, again, it depends. Microsoft is a big yeah, corporation, right? You deal with billion dollar corporations. I mean, there's, there, there are things that you do. I found a long time ago that every license I do, yeah. I treat it as a new baby. And it's, each one of them is going to have a personality. And I don't compare any license to another one because they have different agendas, they have different things they're going to do. It's, it's like trying to guess what they're going to say about it. And it's like, why even try right. to guess? We'll just take each step as and you, and, they and tell I don't, you. I don't know what's important to them. Right. So so what's important to one corporation may not be important right. to the other, so you just do the best that you can. And you'll be surprised by it sometimes. R right, well, well, sometimes they, <laughs> it depends where you go, <laughs> right? <laughs> because I, I remember having, and I hope Microsoft people aren't listening, but I remember we had one incident where I was doing something for them, but the art that I was doing for them with the toys, it was this cool statue, right? And it had four or five figures on it and they were tying it with their game. But instead of it being on the sort of the art creative side, it went into the electronic side. And the electronic side is completely robotic. And it has to be. Every one of their machines has to work the exact same way. Mm -hmm. sure. And so it's, it, it's a robotic. Yeah. And so they, they saw my toys, they were hand painted, and they weren't exactly the same. <laughs> and so it was like, they called them, it was funny, I was sitting in this room with 20 of them, they called them defectives. <laughs> how come this guy's eyebrow is up here <laughs> and this guy's eyebrow is right here? And I'm like, because they hadn't painted them. It's defective. <laughs> and they want it, and I go, what? And they wanted to take all the toys and somehow fix them. 
So they were all sort of the same, and I go, it's impossible. It's impo when you start doing hand-painted stuff, yeah, you get, now you got the human condition. Mm. You can't, right? No. But again, they're, they're dealing with electronics that must work 100%, right. and eventually we sort of got by it. I, I finessed them a little bit, got well. through it. I won't tell you how I did it, because wow. they still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it all worked out in the end. Uh, can I see that? That's an amazing... This is the, hey, this yeah. We do, we do you know, we do, we've done three inch, we've done 10 inch figures. We've done, uh, this, cool. is, this is the 10-inch one, we've done the six-inch figures. You know, the game, new game's coming out, we got all the new stuff, it's gonna be cool, right? It's, awesome. it's coming out for Christmas time. It's awesome, so. and then you got the Game of Thrones stuff and the Walking Dead it's stuff. The game, yeah, yeah, so we, we've been doing Walking Dead for a long time, right? Yeah. Robert Kirkman, creator of Walking Dead, who they just had this big cool thing at Madison Square Garden yesterday, I don't know if you guys got to go down I there, but it was, it. it was awesome, right? And, and, and it, you know, to distract from the conversation a bit, I don't think people really understand how few times actors and actresses actually get to see their adoring public. Really? Right? It's why when they come to San Diego and they get to go in Hall H and they get to come here, it, they're, they're really taken aback. Mm -hmm. Because even though intellectually they know they have millions of fans, yeah. they, they never get to see them because they're always on a set. Right, right? They, they, it's, it, you're in a box. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not doing it in a stadium every night in front of 60, 70, right. 80,000 people. You're not a rock people. star. Right. Rock yeah. stars to me have the greatest job in the world. <laughs> they come out and they got 40,000 cheering for you. And, and they don't have to wake up till four in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, th but when they come into a hall and do a panel yeah. and they see 4,000 yeah. people, even though they know they've got 40 million fans, there's 4,000. Yeah. It's their eyes get big and they get juice and it's like a jolt of Red Bull and they go, okay, this was in Madison Square Garden. That, that's the like whole arena 20, was yes, it was all filled and they and they showed the premiere and then they brought the entire cast out and they're looking out on and you could just see them all going, wow. And here's the best thing for all the fans out there: God bless us <laughs> because that jolt that we gave to those people will keep them going for four more years. Yes. Right. Because yes. everything's a bell curve, and sometimes you sort of get wore out, you yeah. know. Yep. You have high days and low yeah. days. Sure. And I, I mean, they're going into season six. And so you could say, eh, you know, people get a little bit tired, but you could just see they're going, man, Read you. if this is what we're doing, if this is how we're touching people, I'm strong, let's go, yep. let's go. And, and NBC is saying right now, why did, where, where was this idea when we were talking to Jerry Seinfeld for one more year? <laughs> <laughs> is, you've been to a ton of arenas, a ton of stadiums. Uh, seriously, when it, Madison Square Garden is electric like it was yesterday, is there any better place to just be? I mean, the environment, I think it's part of the way the building was built, and there are a few places in sports, Old Maple Leaf Gardens, obviously, yep. the Montreal Forum, those buildings don't even exist anymore. So is, is there any place you could think of that is like Madison Square Garden? I, I would, well, I, I, I know I'm in New York, but I, I think Fenway Park yeah. wow. is a very unique, I mean, you've seen it on TV, you see the dimensions, you see the oddity of it, and you go, okay, I got it, and then you walk into that stadium and you go, wow, it's even cooler than I thought, right? And it's just old and rickety. <laughs> and even from the street, because it's like a oh, sleeper stadium. You, you don't go even to get popcorn no. and you go, this thing was built in 1970. <laughs> right. I mean, it feels like it could wobble over in a strong wind, so. Uh, you know, because they they've torn all those kinds of stadiums down, yeah. right? Even Yankee Stadium's got the new sure. one now. Uh. And all the sort of the old stuff, I mean, I'm, my no. wife does this to me. She throws my stuff out, <laughs> right? And I'm a bit of a hoarder. Yeah. And I just I'll go, what do I have left from when I was a bachelor? And it's just cool, because eventually it all comes, it's cyclical and it all comes yeah. around and it becomes in fashion again. Yes. So that sweater you it's thought happening is- happening right now. Yeah. yeah, those horrible sweaters I are get, now yeah. cool. I, yeah. get, I get the same thing. It's, it's, it's what we have to do, we have mm. to do it. Uh, we can't collect everything, we, we want to, but we can. And, and we do get cold quarters. But, All right, so show me the Game of Thrones, and, and Andrea is I'm the biggest of Game of Thrones oh. fan. Okay, so we, we, we went from doing the action figures to getting into the construction site, which is, you know, interlocking blocks. We all oh, did it, sure. right? There's companies like, Mega Blocks and Legos and about six or seven others and whatever else. So the, the action figure business was started on one premise. I asked myself one question. I used to go up and down those aisles going, I just don't get why they can't look cooler, <laughs> right? I mean, it was that simple to me, right, as an artist. And so we started the toy company and I just started making cooler, I think, cooler action figures. There's now 20 little children that are doing it, this, you know, I'm, I feel like a proud papa when I look <laughs> at what's out there, because some of them took some of the, sort of the, the m methods we use yeah. and, and the way we paint and pack and stuff. But, but for the last couple of years, I've been walking down that construction aisle going, oh, I mean, I understand the bright colors and it's, and it's for the mom, but it's like, for me, 
I just want it to be just a little bit cooler and smoothed out and whatever else because the closer you get to some of those big builds, yeah. the more bitmaps, right. the bitmaps. And yeah. I go, and my mind says, I could design a piece that would smooth that all out. So right. all we've done. And if you can, why I, not? I know exactly, like I see it from the box and it's it's actually a brilliant idea because when I would build as a kid, I would be like, this doesn't look real though. It's just like, you'd even you'd get all those Legos and I love Legos, but you'd build like, you just go on your own and you build like, oh, this is going to be a brick wall right. and so it doesn't look, look like I'm, a brick wall. I'm, I'm, too, I'm not the demographic of those companies. Sure. I'm not eight years old. So here's what I know. You give me a plate this big with these little dimples or nipples or whatever you want to come, the, yeah. bu the, bu the bumps on it, and you go, oh, it's green, it equals grass. Oh, it's brown, it equals dirt. Oh, it's gray, it equals cement. Not for me, right. Right. not for me. Grass looks different than cement and dirt to me. <laughs> so what we do is we take that same plate, the same plate, I have it, and then we put another layer of, this, of these little things, but on one side, there's detail and texture, right. so it looks like what it's supposed to look for. So I'm sort of the anti-Hugh Hefner, I cover the nipples up, right? <laughs> I just go in there, and I don't want to see that many nipples. You're a so, genius. So when you see, I don't know if you got the pictures wow. down yeah. there, yeah. what it looks like, you want to show it. If you get it close, so okay, or you can turn, yeah, around, turn it around, turn around, that, that'll be the best so, shot. So what we're doing is, we're painting it at the factory, we're mixing the plastics, and we're doing it so there's a grunge factor to it. So it's not like pretty to look at. There for a hundred years, it right? It looks like when you build it, you look like you've built a building. When you're, here's what I wanted. Most people who build stuff like yeah. that, build it and keep it in their room. I wanted to make it so that they could build it and put it in their living room so that it was a piece of art when it was done. That's and, a great idea. And when I you mean, show that, them that it's, you, it's a piece. Yeah. yeah, this is it. That's pretty cool. This is it. We gotta show the And you mix, you mix and match it. This one right that's here. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's yeah. a brilliant idea. That really is. It and it's, it's just it's just using vision. It's your it's your vision, and well, I love well, that. Well, look at here, here. Okay, I'm 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 again. You guys are giving me way too much credit. <laughs> if I had a billion dollar model like they have, yeah. I, I would stick to it too. Yeah. I wouldn't mess with the billion dollar model. But what they've done is just like they did in action figures. They they hone their 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 marketing and their tools and their whole mechanism towards the mom and the eight-year-old mm. and under. Right. And so they leave us geeks alone and it leaves opportunities for guys like me to go, well, if they don't want to service that part, I will take it. Mm -hmm. At a fraction of their business, that's good business for me. We'll just do it and, yeah. it's, and it's okay. And do something amazing and special and fun and not that that can't exist, but that this can also exist. Right. That's right. it. Right. Yeah, right. I love it. And, and then you got the Walking Dead stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, the, the Walking amazing. Dead, again, some of the build. Now this, this build is actually ah. the assault vehicle, oh, right? Look how this, realistic they this are. This is the most realistic, I mean, the, the most complicated of our build. Yeah. But I don't know where your camera's at. No, I but got you. But you can show the front, but if you show the back, you can see there are places where you see hints of, of, of those nipples. Of those nipples. <laughs> but you do there. see dirt and stuff on, on the truck. So yeah. we're going to show the front of the truck first, okay? And this thing is amazing. Yeah, if anybody likes amazing. Army, we're going to be coming yeah. out with the tank, right, from and the first episode. So anyone, like cool. my dad was a huge builder you and, right um, you know, with the airplanes and the models uh, yeah. when he was younger. He would love this yeah. stuff. And that's, that one's over 400 pieces. It's wow. taking people, it to the like, next I've level. Got it built, I've got it built at my booth, and people go, where do I buy that? And it's like, you have to build it. You don't get to buy it. They think right. it's one piece. And then when they look at it, they go, wow, I, you know, now I see the bricks. Yep. Th that isn't one piece. That's 400 pieces, that's right? Have you great. built one? Have I built one? Yeah, it takes longer than you think. The yeah. fun thing isn't for me to build it. The fun thing is to get people who don't build. Yeah. So I, I'm sure you don't play with no. it. It would be awesome to put a time elapse on her because what would take an eight-year-old kid, yeah. what would take an eight-year-old kid about 20 minutes to do will take her about three hours. Really? All right, we're doing oh. it. Oh. We're and doing I it. love it's, that stuff, oh, but no. I love like the puzzle, like Ikea furniture, you think, I love you, Ikea my furniture. Daughter, <laughs> my daughter, like I said, is at med school and she took, she couldn't put the governor's room and all it was was walls and fish tanks and I go, Wow, if I gave you that one, you'd be here for two days. We're, we're, gonna, st we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. We're gonna put a time lapse on And then put, put a time lapse here and the eight-year-old kid next to her. And we're, we're gonna <laughs> send it to you, we're gonna do it. <laughs> and do the two, and, go, and the other kid will be eating lunch, yes. and he'll take a nap, <laughs> and he'll read a book, and do his homework, I'm gonna and then the you'll challenge. get done. I'll accept yep. the challenge. And you got one more to show us b before we let you uh, go. There's a walk and dead, boiler room, a couple of scenes. Uh, Greg Nicotero oh, was, the, was the director of it. Again, these are these sort of cool, unique pieces. So if you see cool. the front, we got all these sort of cool pieces that look like bricks, 
right? We got, Tom, we got boiler rooms, it's just goofy stuff. This is so cool. I, I just have to say to you, thank you so much. You, you always come on and are so great. You're so generous with your time. You are so busy up there, and you come and give us your time, and that's our most precious resource. No, look at, look, look at here's what I here, here's what I know. You can only touch so many people when you're at these shows. And oh, by the way, a lot of the big shows are in the same two cities, right? There are people who live in New Mexico and who live in North Dakota who may not ever get a chance to go to any of these big shows. And we have to figure out ways, you guys are, figuring out ways to touch them, right? And so to me, I am only succeed if I can touch the most amount of people. And so if there's somebody in those states right now that's listening, that is going, wow, that was sort of fun to do. God bless it, because I just don't want to be good to California, good to New York, right. I want to be good to America. And and, and we are, we got uh, Digital Phil in Texas, we've got right. CJ in Texas, we've right. got, uh, J and I, this is off the top of my head what right. I know, because I talk to them all day long, along with a lot of the other terrific. Right. we got Jenny in Finland, Paul Dixon in the right. UK, we're, we're international. Yes, it's absolutely, amazing. so our job is to spread the gospel as wide and far as possible, right? Yes. So, but, for now, the name's Todd, only rhymes with God, I'll eventually, I'll see if I can get to that status some other day. You're amazing. Thank you so much for your time. It's McFarland Toys. You're yep. Todd McFarland. You're unbelievable. I can't wait till you're on the next time. It's so good to see you. Yeah, I appreciate you guys giving me the time yeah, again. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for being here. Terrific. That was a special one for you guys. He is the best. And we'll be back right after this with a whole lot more with your live continuing coverage of New York Comic Con 2015. Check out McFarland Toys while we're gone. Stay with us.